Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Can we just worship the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi, Santa. Yea, God. Hallelujah. 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 The music. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, for his excellent greatness, we praise you. Hallelujah. For his excellent greatness, we praise you. Hallelujah. For his excellent greatness, we praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight. Thank you that you've invited us into your presence tonight. We honor you, Father. Hallelujah. We extol you. We praise you. We reverence you, God. We lift you up. We raise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that you're attracted to our worship. You're attracted to our praise, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord God. Hallelujah. So we honor your presence, oh, God. We desire your presence in our midst tonight. We desire, oh, God, just the outpouring of your spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. Inundate this house. Saturate this house. You said you will glorify the glory of your house, God. Uh, and we are the glory. We, we are the carriage of your glory, God. Now glorify us tonight. Night, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, with your glory, oh God, with your presence, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, oh God, for this opportunity, God, we thank you, oh God, for this privilege, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for this, this time of worship, this time of prayer, oh God, this time of intercession, you told the prophet, oh God, Isaiah, that always make mention of your name, oh God, day, day and night, crying out, until you establish Jerusalem as a praise God uh, so we cry out God day and night uh, we'll not, we won't cease to make mention of your name God uh, until you make us a praise uh, till you make our situation a praise uh, our homes a praise God our marriages our relationships a praise oh God uh, we'll stand in intercession God uh, oh God we'll stand upon the wall God uh, and God until you do something oh God uh, we won't come down off the wall God uh, until breakthrough happens uh, until deliverance comes oh God we won't come off the wall God uh, until oh God restoration comes God reversal comes God yokes are destroyed God uh, shackles are broken asunder chains are destroyed God in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord God we'll stay on the wall until you establish your kingdom until you establish us in righteousness oh God in the name of Jesus we'll stand upon the wall God hallelujah until we see the glory of God uh, hallelujah we'll stand upon the wall until the light arises and the glory of the Lord shall shine upon us in the name of Jesus, we'll stay in our place, God, of, of intercession. We'll stay in our place, oh God, of, of crying out, Lord God, day and night, Lord God, uh, unto him who's able. He said, call you and answer us, God. Uh, and so, Father, we come tonight, oh God, with a spirit of expectation, believing you tonight, Lord God, uh, trusting in you, God, uh, trusting in your promise, oh God, trusting in, uh, oh God, your faithfulness, God, uh, trusting in, oh God, your nature tonight, Lord God, your compassionate nature, Lord God. Oh God, thank you for the mercies that we embrace this day, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, God, on the journey today, God, how you kept us and sustained us, how you emboldened us, how you empowered us, oh God, how you allowed us to have the victory, oh God. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb tonight. Oh God, come with your blood tonight, the prevailing blood, the prevailing blood of the Lamb of God. Let us be covered. Oh God, with your blood tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus, speak to us tonight, shake out of emotion, speak 
Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, speak to our conditions. Speak to our situations, oh, God. We're looking to be transformed tonight, God. Renew our minds, cleanse our minds, purge our minds, God. Oh, God, from every hindrance, every thought, every meditation that doesn't honor you, that does not align with your word, God. Cleanse us and purge our minds, God. And we'll meditate on the things that are not be true. And I love you. We'll record it honest, oh, God. And to be any virtue, to be any praise, we will meditate on those things that will help build character, that will help sustain us, that will increase our faith, God, in the name of Jesus, that will cause us, God, to make bold declarations concerning your promises over our lives. Thank you tonight, God. Thank you tonight, God. We come in this place and be on one accord. God, I decree that you'll bring us to a place of one accord tonight. That there be the unity of the Spirit tonight, God. There be no schism, no divisions, oh God. No wandering minds, oh God. No vacillating, no oscillating. Oh God, but we'll be, oh God, definitive people tonight. Oh God, determined to stay, oh God, to stay, have a mind stayed on you, God. And to walk in unity, Lord God. Cause the unity of the Spirit to prevail tonight. Oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's there that you, it's there that you command the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Shake out of a bokoria kanda. Oh God. He said the new wine is in the cluster. The new wine is in the cluster, oh God. The new wine is in the cluster, God. The new wine is in the cluster, God. The new wine is in the in our grouping. It's, it's in our coming together, God. It's in our oneness. The new wine is in our oneness tonight. Bring us to that place of oneness, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yega, 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 Yega. Cause your will to have the preeminence over our will tonight. Cause your will to have the supremacy over our wills tonight. Oh God, may we just acquiesce, oh God. May we submit, may, may we surrender to your purpose, to your intent, oh God, in Jesus' name. And we cry out, not our will, but thy will be done. Oh God, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Oh God, thy will be done. Shake out of a Korea Sunday. Hasten to perform your word tonight. Oh God, thank you. Thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Minister to us tonight, God. Uniquely. Minister to us uniquely tonight. God, do something, oh God, that you've never done before in our lives tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We give thanks to you, Jesus. We give thanks to you, God. We give thanks to you, God. Have your way in this house tonight. Have your way with your people tonight. You said you will water those who are thirsty. <laughs> oh God, you are God. Early and early when we seek after you, our hearts long for you, our flesh cries out for you, the living God. Father, water us tonight, yeah, because we're thirsty. Yes, God, saturate us with your spirit tonight. We may be under the guidance and the influence of your spirit. And we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Yes, you're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful. Oh God. Yea, God. <laughs> 
thank you for the beauty of our God is upon us tonight. And we thank you for your beauty resting upon us tonight. Mm. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Yea, God. Hallelujah. Yea, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramama Shekera the Bobo Korea Santa. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, the glory of your presence tonight. Oh, the glory of your presence tonight. Oh, the glory of your presence tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Minister to us tonight. When it's all said and done, that we can say it was good for us to have been in the house of the Lord and to have been in your presence. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Mama, Korobo. ago but the Lord has something else in mind so we just uh, submitted to the Spirit of God amen. amen so this is Bible study so um, as I'm teaching if you have any questions please raise your hands please um, let me know that you have a question um, what I'm going to talk about is going through the process um, How many of you really feel like God has taken you through a process or processes? Okay. Amen. Real briefly, Deacon Kyle, real briefly. Don't preach. Just kind of share with us real quick. Come on. The process you feel that God has taken you through. 
Uh, I would say just a process of knowing who I am in God. I would say that has been a process that has been something that's from the time I got saved up until now, just learning that process. Um, I can't, I'm not preaching, but there are countless other uh, examples. Somebody else, real quick. I feel that God has just taken me through the process of understanding his word when it says life is but a vapor. You turn around, you close your eyes, and you look, and 40 years is gone, just like that. Amen. Um, those of you who know me by now, you know God talks to me through situations, uh, circumstances, and, and conditions. So I recently um, <clears throat> finished an assignment at a staffing agency downtown called People Share. Um, our recruiters work with the heads of human resource departments and presidents of companies of um, all types and sizes. And we find um, what these companies are looking for in employees. So People Share is a very specific type of staffing agency. We're not the regular kind of staffing agency where you can just call and say, as a lot of the people did, y'all hiring. We, 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 we're, we're not like that. Okay, so. Um, we look for employees. We have a database of, of over 500 people. And out of those 500 people one day, I happened to call Deacon Rich. And I'm like, I know that voice. And then later on in Bible study, he said, did you call me today? I said, I did. Okay. Um, so what we do is um, we find people, we have a database of over 500 people that have registered with the agency. And we try to staff those people in those companies. Okay, so when I first started, I was given a telephone script. And in the script, there were six questions that you had to ask every single person that called. Didn't matter if they were registered with the agency, didn't matter if they saw a position online, there were six specific questions you asked every time somebody called, okay? So it didn't matter who they were, right? So um, if a candidate was new, um, I would ask the, the questions, and this was a, a kind of a semi-paperless agency, so everything we did was online, so I had the computer screen up. They had software called uh, UltraStaff, and so I would put everything in UltraStaff. If I'm on the phone with you and I call Deacon Rich, I have my earpiece in and I'm typing my conversation with him, got my screen up so that he can answer those six questions that I need to ask him, but he didn't answer, so he didn't get to ask the six questions. Um, so if a candidate was new and calling in about a posting online, uh, part of the script was to give them specific instructions in how to register with the agency. We had a process that everyone has to go through. It was a set order that could not be bypassed or altered. We had a specific way that everybody had to register with the company in order for us to find them jobs. So everybody had to go through our process. Amen, good, you're listening. Um, two weeks before my assignment ended, we had this big contract with a meat packaging company here in the city. And we had posted a position online, and so our phones were ringing, I mean, off the hook. So one day, before I went to lunch, I had logged in 35 calls of people that were calling about this one position. Um, the girl in the cubicle behind me, because it was a small office, it was about as long as from that wall probably to that wall, and there were four cubicles, and then there were offices along the, the wall. And so she said to me one day, she was from South Philly, so you know how South Philly people are. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Beethoven's not here. All right. So. Um, you know how South Philly people are. So um, she made a comment and <laughs> she said, what's wrong with these people? They call you, tell them what to do, and they get all weird. So I said to her, yeah, people want a job, but they don't want to go through the process. process. So for some time now, that word process has been in my spirit. God has been talking to me about process and processing and kind of took me back over my life and, and kind of identified some things in my life and processes. 
um, that I've gone through. And so thinking about my own process over the years and the various processes God specifically creates and initiates in our lives, I remember as a young Christian, the mothers used to tell us, God only uses broken pieces, baby. You have to go the distance or you can't rush this thing. Let God have his way in you or stay at his feet and let him work it out in you. It costs something to walk with God. I still hear that. I didn't know it, but they were terminologies of processing. Mm -hmm. So to help us kind of better understand, let's define the word process. It means a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. For those of you that are writing, I'll give it to you again. A series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. A continuous action, operation, or series of changes taking place in a definite manner. So if we take a closer look at the definition engraved within its meaning, it literally identifies the journey of somebody who sold out as a believer. It says a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. One thing I've observed about God over the years is that he's very specific and intentional in both how he cares for us and how he orchestrates the events of our lives. Because with God, there is always an expected end and a desired result. When we ask God to use us, he takes the request literally. It means that we give up all of our rights to make decisions regarding our own destiny. When we completely sell out to him, he removes the reins and orchestrates everything we go through in preparation for service. Philippians 1, 6 says, this is the New Living Translation, and I'm certain that God who began a good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns. So our walk with God is a continuous journey of learning, growing, maturing, changing, repositioning, restructuring, and responsibility. God who began a good work within us suggests that he started something and he intends to complete it. God, unlike us, is a completer. He never starts a thing and leaves it unfinished. In Genesis, we are given a front row seat as we watch God make everything, and he didn't stop until it was completely finished and to his satisfaction. Everything he created functioned and fulfilled his exact purpose according to how he planned it, including mankind, his last and most intimate creation. The Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 12 says, for us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Why? Because we are his workmanship, his sons and his daughters, joint heirs with Christ. We are his handwork. We were literally created. Do you understand that we were the only things that God took his hand and formed? Everything else he spoke and it came into existence. But he took the time to hand create man because he wanted him to be exactly the way he wanted him to be in his image. And Jesus hadn't even come yet, but in God's foreknowledge, he knew what would happen down the line. And so he created us in the image of himself. So we are his hand work specifically crafted by God to serve him, worship him, and continue the work he started to make his name known and to add to the kingdom of God. So our lives from beginning to end and everything in between has been molded, shaped, and planned for us before the foundation of the world, including what it will take to make us just like him. God already knew what he wanted to do with each of us and the processes he would take you through to get to, to where he wants you to be. Every hurt, every pain, every loss, every tear, Every disappointment, every struggle, every behavior, heartache, not behavior, heartache. Every lie, every act of abuse, 
every betrayal, everything we experience in life is part of the overall plan of God to process us. Everybody's process is different because everybody's plan in the eyes of God and purpose for your life is different. He intentionally creates processes specifically designed for each and every person. So your process is not gonna be like mine. What you go through is not gonna be like what I went through. Your life is not gonna be like my life. Now we can have testimonies that are similar, but the details all the way down to the specific minute things are different for everybody. And everybody's process is based on your call and your assignment in the earth. And so I can't always look at your process and say, that ain't nothing. Because for you, it is. Just like you can't look at mine and go, that ain't nothing. Because for me, it is. My process started before God dropped me as a seed in my mother's womb. God knew my biological mother would be an alcoholic. He knew that she wouldn't be able to take care of us. He knew that her mother would turn her into the state and we would be taken away from her and put in foster care. He knew the foster family that would take me in. He knew they would introduce me to Jesus. He knew I would be raised in a Christian home. He knew all of those things that I went through. He knew every aspect of my life, the pain, the disappointment, all of those things that I went through. I would not be the person I am today had I not gone through the process. And everybody's process is different. I can remember going through some things and thinking that my life was literally going to be over. I remember one night standing on the train tracks, depressed. I used to have bouts of depression. I would cry all the time and standing on the train tracks in Wilmington, wanting a train, didn't really want a train to hit me. But you know how we do. We just would stand there and just didn't know what to do. The Lord would not let me pick up the phone and call my mother and go home. But he let me stay in Wilmington to go through the process because he knew where I would end up and he knew what I would do. I remember sleeping in an apartment with no furniture, sleeping on the floor. I had to be out of the apartment in 30 days. I had nowhere to go. But I would sneak in and sleep on the floor and get up early in the morning and leave. What process? I remember having one dress that I'd wash and wash and wash because I didn't have a lot of clothes. But the Lord would not let me pick up the phone and go home. And when I went home on weekends, I'd act like everything was okay. My mother never really knew what I was going through. And she used to say to me, you know, you can always come home. But the Lord wouldn't let me because I would have missed what God wanted me to do and not go through my I wouldn't have met the people that I met. I wouldn't have been exposed to the things that I was exposed to. All the tears, all the pain, all the heartache, all of that paid off. I remember standing on the corner in blizzards and cold and rain, didn't have a car, but God kept saying, I'm going to give you a car one day. But I would faithfully go to church on the bus, on the train. When I was living in Wilmington, I'd come up here on the train and come up here on the bus because I was going to church up here. But I stayed in the place, even though it was hurtful, it was painful. I wanted to go home, but God wouldn't let me go home where it was safe, where it was comfortable, where I had my parents and my family because he was taking me through the... And I can look back on those days now and go, wow, man, I made it through. But it wasn't easy. It was scary. There were nights I would cry myself to sleep. Bishop talks about walking around with holes in his shoes and hard paper. I did that. Pins in your underwear and pins in your slips and pins in your clothes because you couldn't have anything to wear. I stand in my closet now and I don't know what to wear, but I remember when I had one dress. I remember when I had cardboard in my shoes and, and I, I have shoes now I don't even wear, but I got shoes. I remember all the promises of God, if you just stay. Evangelist Wiggins telling us, just stay, baby, just stay. God's going to do it. God's going to fix it. It's going to get better. Just stay. And I stayed. 
and it got better. Why? Because I didn't run from the process. So processes are specifically designed for each and every person. Much of your processes is based, as I said, on your calling, your assignment in the earth. God knows what it's going to take to get you to a place of total surrender and preparation. Genesis 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer me who has control over my life. I can't do what I wanted to do. I wanted to get on a bus train the first thing out of Delaware and go home. But I couldn't. Because Christ living in me said, I have something better. Just wait. Wait it out. Stand. Having done all to stand, just stand. I couldn't see uh, September 27, 2017. Couldn't see it. I couldn't even see the next day. I was in so much pain, so much discouragement, so much dif difficulty going on. I couldn't see it. I would go to church and just sit and just cry and cry and cry because I couldn't see it. But I was so stuck, literally in God, I couldn't move. But all I kept hearing was, it's going to get better after a while. God's going to use you. Just hold on. Don't move. Don't move. I can hear Sister Wiggins just as clear. If you go home, baby, you'll abort the promise of God. And had I got on the bus, I would have aborted what God wanted to do in my life. Somebody else would have been standing here tonight if I had run away from the process. So it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. It is no longer I who makes these decisions for my life, but I am totally submitted to the cause of Christ. It is no longer me who has control over my existence, but Christ. We give him permission to live through us, control us, and work in us. That's what your yes means, that you give him total control. It's 100% surrender with no reservations. Did I want to give up? Absolutely. Did I want to go home? Absolutely. I couldn't see anything in my future. I had no money, had no place to live, and then I met a family and they took me in. And the road to recovery started with small steps. This family, this, I think I shared this Saturday, I may have at the worship um, master class, but there was a, 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 a family in Aston, PA that took me in and, and the husband used to go to a lot of churches. And my first introduction to praise and worship was going to churches with him. That was when God birthed worship in me. But if I had run home, if I got on the bus or got on the train, I would have missed what God had for me. I would have missed the assignment that God wanted for my life. Simply because I was uncomfortable. Simply because I wanted to go home to the arms of my mother to a house where I could have three meals a day, sleep in my own bed, buy some clothes, live my life, but the Lord wouldn't let me because I had to go through my process. The problem is that many of us struggle with the yes because of the result of the process. We're afraid of what, might, what it might look like. We don't know what God might ask or require of us. Many of us still want to hold on too much of ourselves as we can. We still want to be in control of our lives. If you're going to be committed to God, the things of God, and the call of God on your life is going to require a full-hearted yes, which means you must position yourself to hear and obey when he speaks and gives direction to your life. It means you give up 100% control. So whatever the Lord says... That's what you have to do. The new season of your life requires that you go through the struggle, the test, the making and the breaking process. When he asks you to trust him and give him full control, you have to trust him and know that he knows what's best for your life. At 20-something years old, I didn't know what was best for my life. 
I knew what my life looked like. I knew what my family looked like. I knew, you know, what life to me looked like watching them with jobs and homes and cars. And I thought that was really what my life was going to be like. But God has something totally different. But had I run away, had I given up, had I left home, left Delaware, I would have missed everything that God had for me. That's why I said everybody's process is different. You don't know what God is going to take you through to get you to the place of total surrender. But you have to be in a posture where you say yes to the Lord regardless of what it is. Was it hard? Absolutely. There was a season in my life where I was totally dependent on other people. Anybody that knows me knows I am very independent. My mother raised us to be. When my father died, my mother never remarried. She raised my sister and I. She raised us to be independent girls so we could take care of ourselves. And so it was very hard for me to give that part of me up and not know from day to day where a meal was coming from, not know from day to day what I was going to do. I didn't have a job at the time. I had dropped out of college. I got sick. I went home for about four months, came back, totally lost interest in school, started working, just everything changed. But I stayed where God positioned me. So we have to get used to hearing the voice of God concerning our own lives. But what happens a lot of times is we shut out his voice. Because we'd rather hear our voices and we'd rather hear the voices of our friends than hear what God is saying. God may be saying something totally different to you and your friends are saying one thing. So like, like the, the report says, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to go with what your friends say? Or are you going to go with what God says? Which is more important to you? Because you have to understand what God is doing. We shut him down as if he doesn't know what to do with us and how to properly manage our lives. Ephesians 1.4 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and love. His plan is to present us faultless and blameless and ready to complete each and every assignment. So in, in, in the midst of that, I can't tell you what your process is like. And, and don't think, you know, processes are when you're young. We're still going through processes. Every assignment, every anointing, every responsibility requires that you go through another process. So processes don't end. Okay, I made it through this one. Oof, I'm good. It doesn't end. There are different processes for different things. But you have to be open to the Lord and you have to submit yourself to the point that no matter what he wants to take you through, no matter how he wants to take you, and that's scary because when you say yes to him, that song that we sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Remember that song? Rachel was just playing it a few minutes ago. Remember that one? That means that you give God total and complete access to your life. So that means today, this moment, he can change your life up if that's what he wants. He can snatch everything from you if that's what he wants. If that's what it means to get your attention, he can drop you like a hot potato if that's what he wants. Yes, ma'am. Can we get a mic so we can, everybody can hear the questions? Yes. Because some people's processes are identified as trials. Um, what you go through the intensity of what you go through, all of those things are part of your process. And remember, I said everybody is different. For some people, it might be sickness in their body. Um, let me rush ahead a little bit because that kind of gets to my, my next thought. Okay, so um, remember that when you walk with God, it does cost you. The anointing is never free. <laughs> no matter what anointing you have on your life, you're going to have to pay a price for it. And that's scary to some people because, again, you don't know what the price is going to be for you to pay. God doesn't tempt us with sin. So I've heard people give testimonies about sin. Sin is not a price that you pay for the anointing. Now, the Bible says that God works all things out for our good. But sin, because the Bible says God doesn't tempt us, right? In that scripture. So I hear, I've, I've heard people talk about, well, I did so and so and so and so. And I knew that was God. No, not necessarily. That was your choices. But in your choices, God can work things out. Mm -hmm. 
for your good. So here's some of the things, okay? So um, here's what your process might be, aloneness and isolation. Detachment from family and friends. God took me from my family. When I say took me, I went away to college and never went back home to live. That's taken me from, I would visit and, you know, holidays and summers and all that kind of thing. But the comfort of home and all the things that home represented, he took me from. So it was the attachment from family and friends, lost relationships, attacks on your mind, your body, and your emotions, levels of lack, and sometimes disappointment. But only God knows what it's going to take to break your will and land you face to face with him. Only God knows what it's going to take to put you on your face in front of him. Only God knows what it's going to take to get you to a point where you and him are now one. And that's called process. And so you have to understand that where you are now, wherever it is you are now, some of you right now are going through a process. Some of you right now are going through tests. You're going through things because it's necessary for God to get you to that place because on the other side of through is victory. On the other side of through is your assignment. On the other side of through is what God really wants you to do and is intended for you to do all along. But he has to take you through processes to get you there. Because it has to be his mind and not yours. It has to be his will and not yours. It has to be what he wants and not what you want. And it has to be total 100% surrender. Not on the tip, not on the peripheral, not one foot in and one foot out, not one minute you're doing what you want, next minute you go out on your own. He has to be 100% surrender in order for God to get you to a place where he can totally and absolutely use you. Only God knows what it will take to break you. So your yes to God should give him total access to yourself. It should give him the right to rearrange and set things in your life right between you and him. It gives him permission to take you through a tailor-made process that only you can go through. You might be married tonight and your husband's going through one process and you're going through another. You don't get a group package. It's individual. Okay. So God has a plan for each of our lives and none of us are a mistake, but we were intentionally born in the earth, set aside to fulfill the assignment he's given us, understanding that our lives are not our own. Each of us was predestined to experience the things we have experience, and to be born into the families we were born in. Every aspect of our lives was orchestrated and planned before we were formed in our mother's womb. So you no longer have the rights to you. At salvation, when you said yes to faith in Christ, you gave him permission to process you. You didn't know that, did you? You gave up your right to you. You know how you were up here at the altar snotting and crying, God, I'll live for you, I'll die for you. You know how we say, whatever, we want, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. You know, I want to be in God's will. You know, I want him to live in my life. That means process. It would have been better for you not to say anything than to say it. And then when the process comes, you shrink back. Because you're going to be processed. Everybody is. And especially those of you with calls on your life, with assigned, specific assignments that God has given on the earth. Some of your processes might be harder than the average Christian. And you've got to be prepared for it. And God is not going to slack up on you because you told him yes. You shouldn't have told him yes. So the Holy Spirit will not override your will to live for and serve for him. It's either yes or no. The no says, hands off, I'm good. 
just the way I am. I'm living my life the way I want with no interference from you. But your yes, however, means that you are willing to completely surrender to him. The song that we sing, Yes, Lord, the first time I ever heard it, I, it's just such a powerful song. You know, we get caught up in the emotion of it. But I remember one Sunday morning we were singing it, and I was standing there, and I, and I started singing Yes, and all of a sudden I stopped. And in stopping, I was just thinking about the cost of that yes. What am I saying yes to? At this stage in my life, what am I saying yes to? I don't want to just sing it because it sounds good. I don't want to just sing it because the whole house is singing it. But what am I really saying yes to? What do you want from me now? I asked God the question New Year's night sitting right there, what does the rest of my life look like? Because I've come over some hills and come over some mountains and been through some valleys and some storms, some tornadoes and some tsunamis, been through a lot of things. Okay, what's the next phase of my life look like? What am I saying yes to? What do you want from me now? And so when you sing songs like, yes, those kind of declarations, don't be so quick to just get caught up in the moment. Bishop tells us all the time, your yes is going to cost you something. And you don't know where God is going to take you when you say yes. And that's not just talking about travel. Where is God going to take your life when you say yes? What does the rest of your life look like because you said yes? What's the requirement going to be for your life because you said yes? What is the process going to be in your life because you said yes? You want the glory, you want the fame, you want the blessings, you want all of that. But a lot of that stuff comes through process. And you won't get it until God processes you. And God is not like the public school system. You're not going to just, they're not going to kick you out when you're 18, 17, 16, for whatever it is. I remember when I was growing up in Baltimore in high school, there was a guy in high school, 20 years old. 20. He's a big, dark, black guy. 20. Because the school system wouldn't push him through just because he got older. He wasn't passing academically. His attendance was pure, poor. Because he was in a couple of my classes, didn't come to school, hanging out on the corner with the guys, just pop up anytime he want. So he didn't get to go through. And God will stop you right in your tracks if you don't meet the criteria, if you don't allow him to process you correctly. Because remember, when he gets ready to use you, you've got to be processed. You've got to be complete. You've got to go through everything he puts you through just to prove that you can handle the assignment He's going to give you. You're going to be challenged. Things are going to come up. Just the test to see if that yes really is a yes. Just to see if you really are honestly true to God or you just faking. You know, we hear about fake news now. Maybe you got a fake yes. I don't know. But you've got to give him permission to live in your life. And I wonder, again, if we really take the time to think about things that we say. But we just get so caught up. Bishop said something one time. I think it was the night he was teaching on prayer. And he was talking about how a lot of times people just repeat stuff because they hear it. And they think it sounds spiritual. And, you know, you hear it. It's, it's, you know, every, every church has its own vernacular. Then there's a vernacular in the body of Christ. You know. And so people just say stuff because they hear stuff. You know, Pastor Beethoven said it, so it must be right, so I'm just going to say it to you. You know, a bishop said it, so, you know, if bishops say it, then it's just, I know it's right. I'm just going to say it. And so a lot of times we say things and we do things and we think that that is what God requires of us. But everybody has a different process they have to go through. But your responsibility is to simply say yes to the Lord and allow him to walk you through that process. 
no matter what it is. It might be an attack on your body. It might be a loss of a job. It might be a loss of a family member. Whatever it is, I don't know. God does what he wants when it comes to stuff like that. But whatever works for you, that's what God wants from you. He wants that yes from you and that yes that will give him permission to do whatever he wants to do in your life to form you and to make you. When God begins to move you forward in life, he does it step by step and line upon line. He never rushes you to the front. You never get pushed ahead of everybody else. Remember when President uh, Trump, I call him 45, but when 45 was, uh, when he went to the GM summit, I think it was, and he was kind of in the back and he pushed the president of France out the way and moved in front so he could be in front in the photo op. God doesn't do that. He's not going to push Dominique away so you can get up front. You got to go through this thing line upon line, precept upon precept, step upon step, process upon process. And if you don't pass the test, guess what? You got to do it all over again. Because he's not going to pass you if you don't pass the test. He's not going to move you forward if you don't meet his requirements. Not yours, his. And you'll look up and you'll be thrown back again. You look up, you'll be pushed back again. You look up and you push back again. Why? You didn't go through the process correctly. You fought, you changed your mind, you were in one day and out the next and around one day and gone the next. and. You know, all of this um, back and forth. There was never a balance. So there was never anything that God could work with. In Scripture, every person God used went through a process. And for some of them, it cost them everything. Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob, first son of Rachel, from his coat of many colors and his incessant dreams about leadership, caused his brothers to hate him and sell him into slavery. His time in Potiphar's house, then he was thrown in jail, and then years later rose to become the vicar in Egypt, the second most powerful man in the kingdom, who would save a nation from starvation. Process. Moses, born into slavery and was placed in a basket, let down in a march by his mother Jacobed to keep him from being killed by the order of Pharaoh, was found and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, Queen Bethea, raised and educated as an Egyptian, killed an Egyptian slave master in the field, ran away to Midian where he, was, where he encountered God at a burning bush. After a time of wilderness training, God sent him back to Egypt to demand Pharaoh to release the Israelites. He led him through the desert toward the promised land, received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai and died on Mount Nebo. Process. David, a shepherd, was a man of contrast. At times he was single-minded, Devoted to God, yet at other times he failed miserably. Committed some of the most serious sins recorded in the Old Testament. He lived a frustrating life. First in the shadow of his brothers, then constantly on the run from a vengeful king. He kills Goliath, becomes a favorite of King Saul, and friend to his son Jonathan. After Saul and Jonathan are killed in battle, David is anointed king. He brings the Ark of the Covenant back to the city. He arranges the murder of Uriah the Hittite to cover his adultery with Bathsheba. He gathers and prepares the materials for the temple that his son Solomon would build and would succeed him on the throne. He wrote 74 of the Psalms and was called a man after God's own heart. Process. I'm gonna close with this verse. I came across it the other morning in my devotions and I added it to my lesson today. Second Thessalonians 1.12 says that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and in you, and, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the result of process. So I encourage each and every one of you to just stay the course. As hard as it may be, as difficult as it may be, as painful as it may be, as scary as it may be, you might be tired, you might be frustrated, you might be whatever, but stay the course. Shelter in place. Shelter in place. 
and allow the Lord to work out of you whatever needs to be worked out. Let them change, let them shape, let them mold, let them beat up on you if you need to, let them correct you, let them do all the things he needs to do so that when you go through the process and you come out on the other side, you are totally 100% prepared for, God, for what God wants to do. I often think about my life and what I, I went through as a young girl. But had I run away when I wanted to, my God, look at what I would have missed. I wouldn't have met you. That would have been a disaster that I didn't meet you. I know, right? I wouldn't have met Bishop. I wouldn't have met any of you if I'd run away when I wanted to run away because I was scared, I was alone. I didn't know what God wanted from my life. I didn't know God then like I did now. I just felt like my life was a disaster. I was a failure. I lied to my mother the whole four years, um, up, well, three years that I was in college, that I was okay. I wasn't okay. I was depressed. I used to take Valiums and sleep. I slept half of my life away because my dreams were better than my realities at the time. And I would sleep, just sleep. Until somebody who saw God in me pulled me up by my bootstraps, carried me up under their arms, and brought healing to my life. And let me see who I really was in God. And I give Evangelist Anna Wiggins credit for that all the days of my life. Has she not carried me up under her like a baby in somebody's arms? I wouldn't be here now because she wouldn't let me go. I used to travel with her. I was her adjutant. I shared this with LIT. I used to style her wigs and do her makeup and carry her bag and rub her feet when she you know, finished preaching. I was her adjutant. First time I ever flew in an airplane, she took me to Minnesota. She had to minister. But she kept me right here and wouldn't let me go. She used to slap me in my back and say, stand up straight because I would lean over, because that's, that's how my life was. I'd walk around like this a lot of times, just because I just felt so depressed and didn't like me and just went through a whole lot. And she would walk up behind me and slap me in my back and say, stand up straight. You're a child of God. Stand up. And it changed my entire life because I allowed God to take me through And we have a lot of people that just want to be up front, just want to be important, just want to be a name, just want to have a title, but haven't gone through anything. Haven't been tried, haven't been tested, haven't been approved, haven't been anchored. I paid a price for my anointing. I paid a price for my life. And people in and out and up and down and all around. I let Bishop listen to a prophecy when we were at um, Prophetess Tracy's uh, thing in July, was it? July. And part of the word was that God said, the word was that God said, I, you allowed me to process you. And that's when God really started dealing with me about this word process. You've been processed was part of the word. Part of the word was you're grounded. Bishop and I talk all the time about how a lot of people don't go through the things that we went through because they weren't, they weren't grounded. I, I'm glad I was raised when I was. I'm glad I went through what I did because these, these new saints today can't go through nothing. Can't stand up and down, falling in and out, just no, no grounding. You know, like, right, they don't, a lot of them don't want it. But I thank God I went through that. I thank God I had mentors that didn't play with me. I mean, we get in my face. And you wasn't all, well, you better get out of my face. Mm -mm. We, we were scared to the point where we obeyed. And the result of obeying was the kind of life that we have, the kind of foundation that we have. Didn't mean we didn't make mistakes. We didn't, you know, we, didn't, we did our thing. But it gave us a grounding that people today don't have. It gave us an establishment in the things of God that people today don't have. It teaches you not to run in the hard times. Teaches you how to say no to things because you recognize the price that you had to pay. And because you've been down those roads before, 
you know what it's like, you can stand your ground. I love this new, what is it, stand in place, lock in place? New terminology that came out of our current wars. Shelter in place is what it is. I love that. Because that's what we were taught to do years ago. Shelter in place. We didn't move. We came to church, even though we wouldn't feel like it. You, you better be in church, because they would look for you. Welcome down the aisle. Oh, okay, there you are. You know, you didn't have options to come to church. You didn't have options to do what you want to do. They would come to your house and get you. Wait while you got dressed. Come on, we're going to church. Mm-hmm. You had your hand up? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So all of those are kinds of things, kinds of processes that we go through. And my prayer is that as God process you, you stay in place and let him do his perfect work in you. And especially now in the day and times that we live, we need people that are going to be strong. We need people that are going to be grounded. We need people that are going to be in place. You know, you hear all the time about the harvest that God is bringing in and all of that. And I really believe that we're close to that time where the doors of our church is going to bust open with people coming in. And the last thing that we want to do is when they come in, we're not faithful. We're not committed. We're not grounded. Okay. You know, what kind of example are we to them? You in and out, up and down. Doing whatever because they're, going, they're coming in looking for something. So what do you have to give them? if you don't allow the Lord to process you. I remember one of my prayers was to, to, God, to the Lord was, God put someone in my life that would help me be grounded and, and allow me to um, uh, go through the process. You know, and I know that all of us here, we can be that person in someone's lives that will help them through the process, especially for those new ones that are coming in, for those that are coming in, you know. And I think it's so important because we're here, we're positioned, praise God, you know, that we, we definitely, when we see them come in, that we are the ones that would help them. But you have to want to. And even right now where you are, you know, you have to want somebody to help you walk you through some things. Because I think you know, you think you know what you, you're doing. I, you know, you might think you know what God wants. But sometimes, well, not sometimes, God will actually show other people sometimes areas in your life that he needs to work on that you don't see. But you got to be open and willing to hear what God is saying to you through another voice. I am whatever I am today because I listen to people who had the rule over me. The people that God put in my life to mentor me. And I was obedient and followed instructions. And it resulted in my life being what it is today. But I was always raised, I was always the obedient child. My sister was a rebel. I was the obedient one. So God put that in me as a little girl. And it just grew up in me. I recognized people that knew more than I did. God put me in, in careful hands of people that knew how to groom me and shape me and mold me and mentor me, and still is. I consider this place a safe place, a careful place. Yes. Well, God wouldn't have sent me here because he knows me and he knows what I need. And if it wasn't, I would have been gone. I wouldn't have stayed. And so you have to recognize that if God puts you in a place, you're in a place. And you're here for a reason. And part of that reason is to groom, to shape, develop, shape, mold, discipline, whip you into shape, process you. God chose this place to do that, along with other things. And you, yes, ma'am. Can you stand up so your voice can project?
Amen. Amen. Any other questions, comments? No? Okay. Yes. Um, man. I'm sweating this. I'll come up. Can I come up? Or? <laughs> it's overwhelming. It's really overwhelming. But, um, man, I've been... I've been honestly just running away from God this whole time. As most of you can remember, I gave my life to Christ 8, 8, 12. And um, just Tuesday, I went to a bike ride with a bishop. And we were talking, we were talking. I was sharing my past and like just, just being honest and being transparent. And he stopped me at one point and he just told me um, 8, 8, like the, the number 8 is uh, time for new beginnings. So that kind of tripped me out and uh, just really went introspective and thought about my life and Vanessa, like your whole, Sister Vanessa, your whole story today is kind of just like my calling with um, school. Like I never liked school just because they told me like I couldn't amount to nothing. So I, got, I became depressed and contemplated suicide. I was depressed. I just started smoking weed, uh, alcohol and everything just to feel validation to my friends, my peers, to feel welcomed and appreciated. So throughout the whole school year when I was from 2014, no, I transferred into ESU 2012. So from 2012 until uh, 2016, I was in ESU. Then 2016, it was really rough. Um, the housing environment wasn't nice. Uh, my family wasn't going, doing too well, and I was literally just isolated at ESU by myself. So Kyle would call me all the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. But uh, at the end of the day, I was just super depressed, super lonely, just like you. And I would smoke weed just to fall asleep or just stay to sleep. And just like that was my happiest moment. But that was just because of my validation with my friends. And at the end of the day, it's like I had a lot of things going on with my clothing line. Uh, I, was make, I was sponsoring a kid in Kenya. Everything was going well. Like I made the most I've ever made, but I was still broken down just because my peers around me told me like I'm not, I'm, I'm worthless, or my teachers told me I'm worthless. So I went believing this, and um, I go back to the bike ride. I called Bishop. I, you got a missed call yesterday, didn't you, for me? I called him. Right. I, so I talked to my brother. My, me and my brother have been two different sides. You know what I mean? So it's like day and night. So. I've been telling them, we've been, we, we started, we, we had a family meeting, me and my mom and my brother, and we decided like we're gonna start hanging out. Family dynamics haven't been that great, so let's fix it. I'm home now, let's, let's try to fix things. So that was, that started happening, so we started texting more, we've been talking more, and um, after the bike ride, I came home, and he called me, and um, it was just totally random. I was in a zone, I was praising and worshiping, I was uh, editing videos, I, I, was, I was on fire. I was, I was really on fire, so he called me, and I'm like, he's like, yo, what's up, what's up, what's going on? So we had this whole conversation. And then at the end, um, I don't know how it came about, but he was, he was, he was, the conversation about weed and drinking came up again. And it's like, I'm, I just told him I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, then he's like, you don't, it's okay. You could just do it a little. It's, it's okay, just, just a little. Then as soon as, as soon as he said that, I was like, okay, but you're not listening. I really, I, I'm done. I really don't. It's okay. Just a little, just a little. I'm like, all right, you're not listening. So I, I got really mad, started saying a few curse words and just started getting loud because you're not really, I'm serious. Like you're not really respecting my choice right now. So I kind of broke down and uh, started like almost tearing up and I, I got super loud and um, I was like, yo, I got to go. I got to go. It's like, yeah, you see, you, you got to go because you've been always saying this. You'll be always saying this. And I'm telling you. You said, you said this last time, you're gonna quit, you're gonna quit. Then I was like, I told him, yeah, I'm broken, I'm a sinner, I have lust, I, I have all these things, I'm broken. Like, I'm, I'm, I was saying this to him, it's like, yeah, you said that last time too. So it's like, all right, you're not listening to me, you're not respecting me, I gotta go. So I just hung up the phone and I broke down because that's the same thing, the validation. It's like, I'm still feeling worthless, but this whole time I'm back in church and like, I'm happy Kyle brought me back. And it's like, we've been talking, but still, it's like, he's still just like, the devil's like trying to work. So it's like, I broke down call Bishop, he didn't pick up, call Kyle, he didn't pick up. Then I just ran to my mom, I was like, I never told my mom I've been doing drugs. So I just ran up to her, like I opened the door like, mom, 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 I've been doing drugs. I've been, I've been smoking weed, I've been drinking. I don't want to do it anymore, but Les is making me do it. He still says it's okay. So I just broke down, started crying. My mom laid uh, his, her hands on me and just, my cousin came, they laid hands on me and just prayed for me. And this, I even called Kyle right after, and I just told him, yo, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't have the urge for it anymore. I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm done. Yeah. It is. 
Amen. Bishop. One thing that comes to mind is that blessings <laughs> and burden work together. Like a coin. One side is a blessing, another side is a burden. How you handle the burden determines how you enjoy the blessing. Mary glad to give birth to the Messiah. But she's now faced with divorce. Joseph wanted to divorce her. Only because she said yes to the angel. Let it be done to me as you have said. Arriving, now she, her, her, her wedding party is going through the door. Now Joseph has a divorce certificate to give to her privately. Now the whole community look at her as a prostitute. Because where is the Holy Spirit that made you pregnant? Mm. First time, heard of. You never know the process. But your yes, you can allow him to carry you through whatever he wants to carry you through to bring redemption to many. Mm-hmm. And today, here we are. Out of that yes, we sit in the church today. Amen. May God help us to be processed regardless of what we go through. But a yes, we'll take you through the process. Thank you. Anybody else want to share anything? Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, um, and I don't want to, I don't want to bust anybody's bubble, but you know, we hear a word, and then, um, you know, we re- get happy, but we don't apply it. And so, you know, it's the application of the word. Many of us have been tested and tried, and we've blown it. You know, it might have been somebody attacking us. It might have been somebody who was cantankerous, somebody who betrayed us, somebody who did us wrong. And God was taking us through the process because there were some things he wanted to do with us. But our focus was, was always on the other person. <laughs> it was always, you know, we focused on the other person. We blamed the other person. You know, yeah, they did, they did wrong. It was, it was an, an injustice, you know, it was, it could, it, it, and it may have even been sinful, but we missed it because God was trying to do something in us. And many of us have not gotten to the place where God wants to get us because we got self-righteous, we've been blaming people, condemning people, criticizing people, rebuking people for what they've done unto us, but it wasn't, it wasn't them. We missed out on what God wanted to do in our lives. And so now we haven't grown, we haven't matured, we haven't developed because, you know, we were justified because we blamed somebody else for the wrong they did and God was using them. You know, there's two things, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, one it says, you know, uh, remember those who have rule over you. And then in 17, it says, obey them that have rule over you. And many of us, you know, we, we say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'll be obedient to you. And you know you're lying. You know, you know you, you'll be obedient as long as it pleases you. You'll be obedient as long as it lines up to what you want to do. You know, and so, and so, um, uh, you know, and so we're not going through the process. So we'll never, we won't get to where God wants us to be because, well, he's just a man like me. He's a woman like me. Many of us ask to be accountable. Folk want to hold you accountable. You get mad at them. You know, because you won't go through the process. You know, you miss out on what God wants to do with you because you're blaming somebody else. Oh, they hard on me. They, no, that's God trying to get some stuff out of you. Amen. 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 And so, you know, this, this whole thing going through the process, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's a price to pay. But, but it's going to cost you more if you don't pay. Amen. And so... Uh, this was this was this was a this was a, uh, a, a a rough word tonight, and I, I want you to I want you to understand you know the the gravity of it, you know it's just this wasn't just to tickle your ears and make you feel, but you know we, we got to evaluate ourselves every time, you know, something happens to us. God, what are you doing? You know I've I've come to learn I've come to learn even when I think I'm right and things happen to me, I ask God, God, what did you want me to learn in this? 
you know, what you allow that happen. There was something that when I've been, whether I've been betrayed, whether I've been lied on, whether, you know, whatever the injustice was, God, you allowed that happen. Why? You know, what do you want me to learn from this? You know, I, I, can, I, can, I can blame everybody else what they did, point fingers, but then if I don't ask God, what did you want me to learn out of this? I'm not going, I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to mature. I'm not going to go through a process. And so, you know, I, I think God wants to check some of us on our behavior, check some of us on our attitude, even when things are going against us, to see what God is trying to do with us. And, we are, and, and, and we'll blow it. When we keep blaming somebody else, I don't believe they did that to me. I don't believe they did. Yeah, they did it to you. You know, wh why did God allow that to happen? Because there's some stuff in us that God wants to get out. Somebody being nice to you won't get it out to you. But somebody being cantankerous and nasty, come on. Because many of us don't know what's in us until, until, until the right circumstance comes. I, I, I don't believe. I, yeah, you, you'll see there's some stuff in us. You know, that, and then you've been praying, God, whatever you want, God, you will. And so when God begins to allow his will to come forth, we don't even submit to it because we're so busy blaming somebody else. Are you following me tonight? Great word, great word, great word. But I don't, I don't know if we understood the real impact of it. You know, I got to stop and say, God, what are you doing in my life? You know, we pray, God, ah, oh, I want patience. Well, tribulation brings patience. Come on. Tribulation brings patience. How are you going to get patient without tribulation? I want to love everybody. How are you going to love somebody unless you get around unlovable people? That's the process. Come on. You know, that's the process. Unlovable people is the process to get you to love, love people. Because as long as you're, you're cronies, as long as they're your homies and they're doing whatever you want them to do, that is a false sense of love. And many of us are going through a false sense of graces, false sense of, of, of the fruit of the spirit because we have not been tried and tested. And so we think that we got it together. No, no, you ain't got, you don't have it together. Come on. If you really, come on. If you, you the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience by the thing which he suffered. You know, that was the process of getting to obedience. Come on, you can't have obedience without, without suffering, without testing. You know, that's what the Bible says. He said he, he tested them to see whether they would obey him or not. Amen. Praise God. Well, amen. It was a, it was, I'm telling you, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a powerful word tonight. <laughs> amen. Powerful word tonight. <laughs> Great word tonight. And, um, and we're going to see. We're going to see. You know, I got so mad now because they had to be rebuked. They had, you know, and, and it wasn't said, if you ever see me do anything wrong, I want you to tell me. Look, hey, look, that's like, that's like me standing up a, bee, a, a, a beehive. Yeah, yeah, and thinking bee ain't going to sting me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know some of you mean that, but, but hey, the process, obey those who have authority over you. Remember those who have rule over you. It, why? It's for, you know, they might watch over your souls. Come on. Without, without, without grief. And they might do it with joy. Uh -oh. And if God's, as God is shifting, there's going to be more sifting. You hear me? As God is shifting, there's going to be more sifting. All right. Well, uh, uh, this Friday we're having prayer at um, <laughs> seven o'clock. That's part of the process. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Saturday, uh, the outreach ministry will be going out. Uh, uh, starting at St. Memorial's on Saturday, right? Uh, in Bryn Mawr. So nine o'clock, nine o'clock to fix the food. That's the process. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you all for um, your prayers. Um, as you could tell, uh, Denise and Rachel made it safely to um, uh, Espana. Amen. And so thank God for that. So um, pray, continue to pray. Tomorrow they'll be out looking at um, housing so that God would give them favor, uh, you know, in terms of... Um, housing. Amen. Um, some, some prophesied and spoke over Rachel's life, you know, that this is, this is more than just going to Spain to work, but God's going to be doing something in you 
and as I was talking to her earlier today, already, already, she's only been there for a, a few moments. Um, she's already been ministering to little kids, little kids, kids been coming up to her. And, um, you know, so she got, got these friends already. And so pray for Denise because, you know, her, 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 um, no habla espanol. Amen. So, uh, so she tried to speak Spanish and look at it like, like well, you're crazy, you know? So I said, she said, I need, uh, I need you in a, in a, and, and Elder Baggett, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we know how to speak Spanish, you know, like the gutter, you know, um, hello, uh, uh, yeah, hello, um, you know, where's the, where's the toothpaste though, and you know, all that kind of stuff, so, uh, but praise God, but thank you um, for your prayers. All right, all, heart, all, heart, all hearts and minds clear, you know, I, I thank God because, um, um, for Brother Ed's testimony, we did, you know, I've learned that, um, you know, so biking is a, is a way of discipling, amen. And so you got to have endurance to ride. You got to have endurance, amen, to make it, praise God. So as, as we were biking, it's an opportunity for me to pour into his life, amen, and, um, and to encourage him. And I think I told him that, hey, you, you got to go through the process. We talked about the process just uh, just the other day, you know, I said it's a, it's a process. Amen. Praise God. And so um, so pray for him. He's he's back on his journey. Amen. And uh, and he's, he's serious about, you know, walking with the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's stand. Um, uh, Sunday is uh, communion Sunday. Amen. And uh, come out, worship the Lord, you know, um, Amen. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the word tonight. And I pray, God, that you would give us, give us ears to hear, not just surfacely, but, Lord, inwardly, that that word would have uh, gone into our inner man and that you would bring forth insight and revelation, oh, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, thank you for your faithfulness. God, we need to go through the fire. We need to be refined. We need to be purged. We need to be sanctified. Lord, uh, you want to show us off to the world. And so thank you that you're doing what's necessary to get us into the place to be your witnesses. You said we are your witnesses, Father. And so we, we, we want to honor our king. We want to honor our God in a way that would bring glory to his name. And so I pray tonight, Lord, that we would even go home tonight and we would meditate on the word and think about what was said. And Lord, uh, see, see the areas in our lives where you've been trying to work on us and we resisted you and we fought against you. And Lord, um, we didn't we blame others. Oh, God, uh, for what they were doing unto us. But Lord, uh, even as David told us. Um, Told, told, told Shimei, I said, leave him alone. He cursed me through stones. He said, leave him alone. Maybe, maybe it's the will of God. And so, Lord, help us not to be presumptuous, but, Lord, help us to be sober when it comes to what you're doing in our lives. Even when we seem to be the victim, God, help us to be sober and help, help us have eyes to see what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, God, for what has transpired this night. Dismiss us now with your grace and your benediction in Jesus' name. Amen.